Hello, this is Erez with ZSA, and today I want to walk you through our onboarding tour for Oryx. Before we get started, I want you to know that you can work through this tour interactively in your browser. This video is just kind of me talking through it, but you can most definitely just do it yourself, which I recommend. So the tour is based around the Moonlander keyboard, but really it's about the configurator itself. So if you're not using a Moonlander, this still applies. Here we show you the default layout. You can click around and just kind of get a sense of how things work, the various layers and so on. But if you wanted to, you can also take the default layout tour. And this tour kind of explains the reasoning behind specific design decisions around the layout. And it's just handy to work through even if you don't end up using this layout. We do expect you to customize it, but this kind of gives you a sense of what went into making the layout. You can work through the tour, and when you're done, or if you want to stop in the middle, just click out, and the tour continues. Now, after kind of exploring the layout and taking a look, it's time to customize it, which is really what Oryx is for. One of the main things to understand about our keyboards is that they are powerful because you can change how they work. And Oryx is the main way you do that. So let's see what that's like. Let's click next. And now you are invited to sign up. Signing up is not required. You can use Oryx anonymously, but I do recommend signing up because then Oryx lets you keep track of your layout and save your compilations over time, lets you go back, and it's just a good way not to lose your work. So I'm just going to fast forward here through signing up. I'm going to click sign up. And I can use my Google account for signing up. I'm just going to cut through here and to the point where I'm already signed up. And here I am signed in. So now I can click Modify Layout to start making changes. And now I can edit keys. I'm going to click a key and explore the pop-up. So for example, let's go with this S key. And I can configure what the key does when it's tapped, when I hold it, when I tap, tap it, or when I tap and then hold it. Let's say this is S. So maybe when I hold it down, I want to send Control S to save my current document. So I'm going to click Held. And this then gives me this pop-up with all the various keys I can assign. I'm going to assign S. I can also use my keyboard to search for it. But this time I'm going to assign S with left control, making this a save key. And then I can see here S and Control S. But let's say if I want to remember this more easily, I can also mark the key either with a text label or with the save icon. So now I have it really visual, save. Great. Now let's say I'm done exploring, I'm done editing. Let's click next. And I got to name my layout. Before I compile it, I have to pick some sort of a name for it. We can go with test layout, but maybe uh, let's call it easy save just because that's the only modification I made here. Great. And now all that remains is to compile. Compiling builds a binary file on the server, and you then take that file and flash it or save it onto your keyboard. And this is the end of the tour. This is worth reading. You can pause here for a moment. The most important takeaway from here is our email. Email us. We read your emails. We reply personally. It's not a big support desk. We really care about your experience with the configurator and with our keyboards. Finally, if you happen to be using Chrome, you can now click Save to my keyboard and work through the workflow of flashing your keyboard right within the browser without having to download any external tools. If you're using Firefox, you can download a flashing tool, Firefox or any non-Chromium-based browser. And that's it. That's really the basis of how you use Oryx. It is super simple. You shouldn't be intimidated. Just go ahead, play with it. And if you have any questions, email us. Thanks for watching.